In the top right corner you see an example of the feather and wedge technique. They're using steel, feather and wedges to split granite. In the background image you can see me using a feather and wedge technique to pop out a granite core drilled with a copper tube and simple abrasive. However, my feather and wedge is not steel. I'm using copper feathers and wooden wedges to split this out. Uh, an impossible lost ancient high technology technique which is actually quite simple. Now you'll see the evidence of this type of quarry work to split granite, andesite, these types of stones. Uh, it litters uh, top right corner is not too far from Machu Picchu. Uh, the bottom right is from Egypt. Here's an example of one of our, uh, that's from um, Pumapunko, notice what he seems to be holding, very closely resembles the feather and wedge technique. You don't need steel. Uh, whatever the lost ancient high technologists will try to sell on to you if they've got a, an agenda to diminish copper. But with wood and copper, you can split this out. Now, that's the basis of, this, of the video. But it actually gets quite a bit darker. And no notice also with very, very gentle tapping, I was able to achieve this. Um, Christopher Dunn was not able to achieve this and he totally deformed, destroyed his tool in the process. And that's, that's what the truth of what this video is about, is about the truth of the fakery which goes into lost ancient high technology. I'll link this video, top left corner you can see the thumbnail, it's about tapering, how drilling with a copper tube, uh, there is no way not to get a taper and that Christopher Dunn's experiment, the only experiment in lost ancient high technology history, was faked. And we can see clear, uh, according to his results, there is the laws of physics and biology absolutely demand that you would have a visible taper. His taper of 1.05 millimeter or half a millimeter on either side could only be achieved by using a copper tube attached to a, a very precise machine the exact type of machine that would be in his workshop. There is just no way that he drilled it as he describes it. It was faked. And that's a very important point because it goes to so many other elements of uh, lost ancient high technology and especially the work of Christopher Dunn, which is just constantly um, cited as uh, excellent re research, master craftsman, supreme engineer. Well, if he was even... Uh, a schoolboy would know that using 80 grit uh, abrasive, so 80 grit sandpaper is one of the rougher sandpapers you'll find in your local hardware store. Go and get a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, go to your polished kitchen bench top or to your lovely polished dining table uh, veneered and rub, go to your car and rub 80 grit sandpaper on it and see what happens. It is schoolboy stuff and yet Christopher Dunn, by his own description, used 80 grit abrasive and then repeatedly blew out the abrasive and then kept drilling and he was surprised that he did not achieve a polished surface like core 7. His core was faked and this experiment using 80 grit because uh, he used a machine and it was faked it was not hand drilled and by using 80 grit it was either designed to fail or it was gross incompetence from an engineer, something again a schoolboy uh, should know. Be, even if you've never done industrial arts, you know what sandpaper does on a polished surface such as a car, a dining table, granite bench top, um, marble coffee table. The lost ancient high technology industry is as a scam. Christopher Dunn is, if not the godfather, he is least the consigliere in this racket. And this will be another expose of uh, either just faked or designed to fail or just gross incompetence on behalf of a supposed um, engineer, machinist, toolmaker who wor worked for the aerospace industry. And this um, house of cards is coming down and I this is just uh, gross incompetence or outright fakery. And that will be the, the purpose of this particular video. Also, I must state, just to be clear, this is not some old argument which has been abandoned. They still repeat this in 2020. They are selling severely overpriced to uh, tours to watch them 
so you can watch them point at stones and say impossible impossible lo lost ancient high technology so i'm not beating an old i am beating a dead horse let's put it in a sense but i'm not beating an, an old dead horse this, this they still repeat this ridiculous claim is still going around now and all sorts of supporters part of this racket of lost high ancient technology have not even updated what they know to be untrue and that is profit selling untruth there's only one word for that this is the experiment conducted by Dennis Stocks viewed over by Mark Lerner where he used a copper tube and just simple sand to drill a core in granite. He got a tapered core as well, but he uses the dry method, no water or oil, so the striations are different. But then to remove the core, he uses steel chisels. This is an Im important feature, and we'll look at the um, deceptiveness that goes on in the lost ancient high technology industry in regards to this. Here's another experiment for scientists against Smiths. Uh, now, they also use a copper tube to drill their granite core. They just use corundum, which was available to the ancient Egyptians rather than uh, plain old sand. And then they remove their core and they also use steel chisels to do this. Uh, however, we'll see more because there's a, f um, there's a pathology to try and diminish what copper can do because it is an essential feature of the lost high ancient technology industry narrative to... Uh, you know, it has to be steel, how did they do it with copper? And we'll come to that in a moment, but first we need to understand what the different levels of copper, but the feature will be uh, they use steel chisels or wedges to remove their granite core. Here's an example of the feather and plug technique, as it's called. It's also called a few other things as well, but uh, there you see the in the top left corner what the, the feathers are, and then you insert the plug in the middle and tap, 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 not only will it cut straight lines, it will cut very elaborate forms, waves, all sorts of patterns as well. Granite lends itself to this, or igneous rock, so this applies for andesite, basalt, or granites as well. Uh, here's a screenshot of the um, Christopher Dunn core drilling experiment, which is just one giant fake, and, and demonstrably so, and it's got, uh, time that this uh, you know, fraud gets exposed for what he is. But here he shows a picture of his granite core and the hammer he used. He could not remove it with a copper mandrel. It totally deformed the copper. It would not remove the core. He had to bring in a steel chisel or wedge to remove it. And there we show the hammer. We'll examine this more in a moment because, again, it's so important to them to diminish what copper can do. But you'll keep hearing them say, copper can't cut, copper can't do this, copper, 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 soft copper, soft bronze, it's impossible, literally they'll say it's impossible to do this with soft copper tools and others. Well again, um, this, this experiment by Christopher Dunn is the only one that exists in the whole lost ancient high technology industry and it is bogus, it's a fake, it's a fraud. But first we need to have a look at the different, for, uh, the way that that the exact same piece of copper can be transformed from annealed copper, which is soft as inflexible or malleable, as into work hardened copper, which is very rigid, very stiff. And we'll show a few examples of that first and put that into perspective because, uh, again, this um, experiment, apart from being elements just being completely faked, the rest of it were designed to fail if they were not faked as well. This is Christopher Dunn's experiment, the only experiment in the whole history of lost ancient high technology. YouTube video called Copper Tooling Demonstration by Jamie Smith. Uh, by the looks of it, she's a school teacher and this is a common art project, arts and crafts that you would do in as we call primary school or elementary school. Notice that the sheet of copper she has, which was curved, uh, is now held flat in place on the table just by some sticky tape. Uh, this is a perfect example of annealed copper, which is soft, and when I mean soft, I mean malleable or flexible copper. Just with a piece of sticky tape, she takes that curved sheet and holds it down flat on the table. Then to design the artwork, just holds a piece of paper and uses a ballpoint pen, a biro, and she traces the lines in there and she's actually marking the copper as we'll see in a moment she pulls the paper away to trace out the design 
or even a piece of wood here a peg um, is hard enough with not too much force is actually showing up and creating that pattern in the copper as we see here that's this is an example of annealed or s copper in its softest state Here's an example of the type of artwork you might have done. Remember doing this at school? You just use a, a popsicle stick, lollipop stick, paddle pop stick as we call them, and you can shape this copper with very, very little pressure just by rubbing it down on the table. Then usually you would pour wax or plaster on the back just to keep it in there. But those are the tools that you can use to work this type of annealed copper. It's important to remember this set. This is exactly the same 99.9% pure copper that is used in uh, electrical wiring, which is annealed. That's why it's flexible. But there are also annealed copper pipes. There are also hardened copper pipes, and they are very, they are exactly the same material. But by the way you treat them, you can turn from very soft, flexible, into very hard or rigid. This is from a video called "Work Hardening, Work Hardening of Copper" by the YouTube channel. Badeshio123. Uh, here she takes a copper pipe, an annealed copper pipe, and she shows how flexible or malleable it is. But she's going to, by bending the copper pipe, she's going to work it. And very easy to bend. And in a moment, she'll bring in someone to try to unbend it. But the copper has been worked, it has been hardened. It is now much harder to unbend than it was to bend in the first place. This is an example of how annealed or soft malleable copper can become very hard, work hardened copper, or another method is like cold beating it or hard drawn copper. The, the exact same piece of copper goes from very soft to quite hard, so soft as in flexible, to hard as in rigid, just by working it. So just by working soft or annealed copper soft as inflexible or malleable you've now made it hard now how do we turn hard copper into hard as in rigid back into flexible or soft copper it's very simple you just heat it you can change copper from rigid stiff into malleable flexible hard copper or rigid copper heat it up to uh, as I describe here in this video until you're getting up to that you'll see the color change when it's getting up towards the red scale that will turn hard or rigid copper back into annealed or flexible copper. Copper can change backwards and forth. It's exactly the same product. It, you're not changing any of the, uh, it's still the same, exact same element, but it can go from ma flexible to rigid back and forth just by heating it or by working it. Um, okay, one more. This video is called Copper Hardening by the YouTube channel George Goal, or maybe Gale, I'm not sure of the exact pronunciation, but here he shows a piece of annealed copper, or soft flexible copper, and to make a bowl. Now it's, it's too flexible, you've probably seen on the table, maybe you know, with some nuts or some candy in there, uh, it's super flexible, that piece he showed, you could, you know, just by accidentally you know, f tipping over, putting your hand on it, you would flatten it. How do you turn that soft piece of annealed copper uh, and soft again I mean flexible or malleable into something hard something practical for instance making a copper dagger or a weapon you work hard on it you cold beat it planishing as he's um, describing here so just by beating a piece of copper or even uh, rolling it working it in in any way will harden it and if you're skillful at it you can harden copper to a very very hard um, material or metal all these videos will be linked in the description for more, but I just needed to set the scene for the uh, snow job that's being done in regards to copper tools, again, in regards to uh, the um, bogus experiment by uh, Chris Dunn, the author of Lost Ancient Egyptian Technologies, forget the exact title of the book, but uh, just to, again, proof that uh, this is actually a, a con job, uh, the way that this has been presented and that the experiments have been rigged to fail or just outright faked. So here I have two pieces. This is actually just a copper pipe that I cut and then hammered flat. Uh, here's a half inch copper pipe. I've, I'm gonna make a tool to do a um, impossible lost high technology. 
and I didn't have a copper rod and because I have to buy like a full length to get one so I, okay I'll make my own. Uh, I flattened the copper pipe, I was using a, a steel hammer and uh, then I folded it over and I tried to hammer it down to make it uh, as much as a rod as I can. It's not, you know, it, I was banging and banging just to bring it to there. This was sort of folding it but I, I couldn't deform the copper. I really needed to, you know, I would have to get a, a bigger hammer and go onto an, uh, an anvil basically to deform the copper. So um, there are different types of copper pipe. Sometimes you'll see they'll come in rolls and you can unfold them with your hand. That's annealed copper, that's the same type of copper that they use in electrical wires, which is exactly the same type of copper as this. This is just called hard drawn copper. Um, it's been ex uh, in the manufacture, well they harden, the co it's exactly the same as soft copper but they just harden it. So I could take a piece of annealed copper and just by hammering it, cold beating it, I, I work hard on it. I turn it into the exact same material becomes much harder. But this is what they would make tools out of, hard copper and not annealed copper. Annealed copper is used for artwork and for um, flashing to, in houses, etc. Uh, to deform the copper, as in the way we're going to see the image of Christa, Christopher Dunn, would take extraordinary force to, to do that the way it did if he was using hardened tool grade copper. This is, again, hard drawn copper. I just cut a pipe. You still see the markings. Now, even with a steel tool, all I'm doing is, is scratching the surface. I'm not there, I'm not indent, you know, I'm not bending it, as in would be shown in artworks in a moment. So, again, these are the things you can uh, easily test, even just with a small piece of copper pipe. The uh, stuff that comes in rolls and you can bend with your fingers is annealed copper. It's exactly the same as this copper pipe. It's just been treated differently in manufacturing. It's not a different. It's exactly the same material, but just. One has been annealed or softened, and this is hardened copper. So there is no way with a piece of uh, a lollipop, you know, ice, icy, uh, what a popsicle stick, paddle pop stick. There is no way I'm going to indent this, and even using it. So, well, if I can't do it with this, I'm not going to do it with a pen, and we'll see that in a moment. So this is um, just an example of the um, extraordinary fraud that is carried out. Okay. Got a piece of wood here. Okay, now <laughs> that it's not it's not going to happen. I'm not going to indent that or create any sort of shape or deformation on the other side of it. It's just not going to happen. Hammering this stuff out um, to deform it and bend it uh, is requires extraordinary force. Not that would not, more force than it would be delivered by a normal hammer, as we'll see in a moment. Uh, the it's remarkable the um, yeah it, it, it's it's a con this is a core drilled with a copper tube into black granite now the important part is that the core is still intact and once you hold this up against the light what happens the light shines through. There is a tissue thin piece of granite holding this core to the uh, original slab. That's how thin this is. Now I'll reverse the stone around, shine it through and again, of course I'm going to have this, but that's all that's holding this granite core together. So let's use plug and feather technique, not steel plug and feather. I'm going to use copper and wood to do this. Uh, feather and wedge, plug and feather, but the, so the, the feather or the, um, or the plugs, or shims, different name for this, they are copper and I could use a copper wedge to force it open but let's cripple ourselves a little bit and let's put in a series of wooden wedges. These are the same wedges I will recycle later. I use the same wedges multiple times. Neither the copper nor the wood is deformed. The top of the wooden wedges will be 
flattened out a little bit and tap 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 I'm holding my stone hammer just there with my fingertips this is not applying a massive amount of force it's just about using copper and wood as the traditional masons would and it works smart not hard tap 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 and pop it will come out now we saw earlier that it was a weak point was given to the granite it's paper thin let's where does it break it did not break on that paper thin edge We'll get a better view of that in a moment. But we see around the entirety of that core there, the outside remains intact. It broke where it was told to break. This is the nature of wow. granite if you apply and listen to masons uh, who know their craft and look into ancient techniques. Here are two other examples, and I will be I'm recycling the uh, wooden wedges. I, I, I made another series because I needed to be a little bit thinner, but one of these wedges I use throughout the entire exper all three of these separations and neither the copper is deformed neither the wood is deformed only at the top where it's been hammered down because it's wood so on the top right uh, that was the same diameter hole using a one inch pipe on the bottom left I have a one and a half inch so you can see the hole that's been removed top right I'm going to remove that core and on the bottom left you can see where it's already been removed this is feather and wedge uh, we'll look in South America in a moment and I'll show you some of the uh, big statues there connected to places such as Puma Punco around the Tiwanaku uh, copper and wood will pop out these cores that's it's just a fact it's not necessary to use steel at all and uh, if Chris Dunn failed to do it using a copper mandrel, well, that's an issue of using bad tools, uh, using them badly and not understanding, not paying attention to the traditional mason's techniques. You know, uh, he's not working smart. He's uh, working badly with a bad choice of, of tools. And I could actually say a little bit more than that. That's the, that's the kind interpretation, the charitable interpretation of what happened with his failure to remove the core using copper. I, on the other hand, learnt, I did not invent this, I pay attention to the past masters in this regard. So, same will happen and then later, in, I'll show you in a moment, we'll focus on the bottom left, but copper, wood, stone hammer, tap, 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 and those cores will pop out. This is, just again, it's uh, simply a fact. Now, it's necessary to say a steel chisel is required to pop out the core because a copper tube will drill that hole, will, will make that core, but they didn't have steel, therefore they couldn't pop out the cores with copper, therefore still some, you know, let's hang on to this desperately that it's impossible lost high technology rather than look at traditional methods and the historical record and, and these other facts. Uh, it's actually a very sad state of affairs, so there in the top right I've got my shims uh, feather and plug feather and wedge technique in tap 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 and out she'll come it's uh, actually very simple now that central wedge that I used on the top right is the same one that I'm using there on the bottom left and uh, again in any moment now so top right it's popped out pulled the core out let's pull her out and there she is. Now we have on the bottom left where I've tapped in two of my wedges. I put in that central wedge. Again, I'm recycling that wedge throughout all three of those uh, experiments to remove granite cores just by using very simple, very primitive tools. And there she is. And now we'll focus on the bottom right and bring it into full screen. So there we have the copper wedges and sorry the copper plugs or shims and wooden wedges I'm holding that hammer just with the tip of my fingers and tapping it down it's I'm not I don't have a big handle hammer applying a massive amount of force it's about uh, intelligent use of materials even with poor materials used wisely you can achieve a lot you can have the best tools and if you use them poorly well you're not going to pop out your core and pop 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 tap 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 and there she goes there she's out so 
and this core here is important one to focus on because it's uh, one and a half inch diameter. It's a larger core, very, very similar size to core seven or the uh, air quotes experiment by uh, Chris Dunn. It will examine wow. more closely later. But it, it's simply just a fact. Yeah, and then now because the core is removed, you can also see that stone that it is a very, very hard stone. You can even see all the little pieces that make it up. Uh, in the future, I'm, I had to pull this granite I got from my pond and I've been I had to sacrifice some of these decorative stones I had there in the pond to get this thicker granite. The, all the other ones were done with 20 millimeter sheets I got from the stone suppliers who make granite bench tops, coffee tables, that type of stuff. But there it is. Copper, wood, granite cores. It's no big deal as Mike Haddock would say. Just a matter of uh, paying attention to stonemasons who know these things uh, and well yeah that's it done finished so uh, no more of this you need steel to work granite especially to remove cores that's it's just not true here are the shots from Christopher Dunn's own page uh, the Giza power plant and his the page dealing with core 7 and his faked experiment and designed to fail lack of polish by using 80 grit. We also see his copper tool um, as he shows it. Now again these are descriptions by his own words. He Look at the tool how severely, de especially the tip, how deformed it is. It's bent halfway. Uh, we can't see the top but there seems to be little damage there but how, how could this possibly happen? He failed to remove his core uh, with this tool. It is um, quite remarkable. He then used a steel wedge or chisel and, and struck it out with one blow, as he describes himself. All masons, you, there's no shortage of them. They all know that, just like that plug and feather technique, granite wants to be split. That's the, uh, for, for its incredible strength, its greatest weakness is the fact that it will crack along lines, more so than uh, limestone or sandstone. So we look at that tool and the question has to be asked, how the hell did he deform that tool so much and still fail to remove the core? Using the same copper feathers and the same wooden wedges for three different core removals, I found zero deformation on the wood or the copper. The top of the wooden wedges were banged down like with a peg, but the, the, the wood was not deformed the copper feathers were not deformed, yet his tool was severely deformed and it still didn't even work. And considering the size of it, that's, uh, that's remarkable, uh, uh, entirely remarkable. Even with my relatively small amount of experience with copper, I know how hard work hardened copper is and how difficult it is to beat down. And to deform it like that would require tremendous, enormous force. So either Chris Dunn, Dunn chose an annealed copper tool or he intentionally annealed his tool or softened it in order to fail or perhaps once again just like with the 80 grit he is repeatedly incompetent when it comes to the most basic workshop skills and knowledge. I really, I really only have one solution for all of this. There are only a few ways I can begin to try and understand what is happening here and that is either it was gross incompetence by an experienced aeronautical engineer machinist uh, who intentionally chose the wrong tool or it was designed to fail to try and prove this point or the defami deformation was just faked as with his granite core. He has, that's what he does and so this is how lost ancient high technology operates. Thank <music> you.